Hey everybody, it's the Running Geek back with another episode of Let's Play Minecraft. Yeah, I bet you don't recognize me either. Uh, <laughs> so, Mojang uh, released a 1.1.3 this week, and yeah, broke custom skins. Um, at least for me. Uh, again, I play on an iPad Pro, um, and uh, I, I've been looking around the uh, the bug tracker for, uh, for Pocket Edition, and I haven't seen too many people complaining about custom skins. Um, but it doesn't work for me. So all I get is an error and I can't even load the world. Um, so kind of interesting. So uh, I did submit uh, another bug as well and uh, we'll see where it goes. So I'm dressed up as Steve today, uh, which is just, you know, outstanding. Um, but I am standing in front of our fully roofed and, uh, and mostly finished uh, workshop here. And I wanted to just show you a couple of things before we really get started today. Uh, the first thing is I did put two kind of like fenced in areas for horses here. Um, I did some of the uh, the path blocks and I put some hay in there. And of course there's our faithful steed. Um, and uh, yeah, so he, he's in there. Unfortunately, uh, Galloping Geek is uh, still unnamed uh, because name tags still don't work. I'm really hoping in the 1.2 release they, they fix that. Um, but I've got another horse pen over here as well. And then what I thought I would do just for now is kind of in these areas where there's not a lot of storage, I just stack some some hay bales, um, obviously, for uh, for the horses, um, just to give it a little bit of decoration. Because these areas, again, weren't going to be used for, uh, for too much. Um, and then one thing I did do is I also put this uh, this slight roof on here as well, this uh, very slight slanted roof um, as we didn't do that in, uh, in the time lapse. Um, so that is done as well. Then I got a lot of work done inside the workshop as well that I want to show you guys, but not all of it is done. Um, obviously, I still got the torches, but um, lighting still needs to be done. Um, but this is what I was thinking for the, the essentially the, the living quarters. It's not really a living quarters. It's just a place to put a bed, um, but I decorated it kind of like a room. Um, over here is uh, storage areas, and each storage areas will have 20 double chests with item frames, a uh, uh, crafting table, and then also a uh, uh, ender chest available. So, and there's four of these, and I don't have everything sorted at the moment, but I do have like all the rocks. I have uh, coal and mob drops and redstones and that sort of thing. Um, and then in the center here is our enchanting table. Uh, so I've got an ender chest up there, and then I've got a uh, just a chest here full of books and lapis as I need uh, for enchanting. And then, of course, there are the, the anvils uh, at every station as well, so I can do some quick repairs. Um, another storage area, much like the other one, and then a final storage area. So tons and tons of storage uh, inside the actual workshop. And then the other thing I did was is I kind of I put these walls up. Um, it's uh, it's kind of like a double layer wall. You can kind of see the pillars here. I think that turned out really well um, and kind of put a uh, design uh, on the wall as well. I also added the uh, two windows at the end, um, surrounded by the uh, the dark oak. I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this is going to be our smeltery area. Um, I don't think I'm probably going to do that on camera. I might do some pieces of it, uh, but it's going to be very similar to what we have over at the modern house as well. Um, and then, of course, this is going to be our uh, potion brewing area, which I haven't gotten started on. I haven't even raised the walls up there yet, um, but I really wanted to get started on, on this episode um, and, uh, and not wait until those were complete. Then over in this area is our nether portal this isn't really that fancy I just decided to kind of do a, a inset a nether portal um, in here so in that I don't know it's okay um, but uh, but I like it um, and then you come down this hallway and eventually this is going to be the welcome center and the map room so here's where the map is going to go and we'll decorate this and make this all fancy and nice as well um, so yeah, so that was, that's kind of the workshop. So the first thing that I wanted to get started on today and, and work on is this uh, nether portal. 
so let me show you what happens when I walk through this nether portal and because uh, I think we uh, I want to get this fixed so that we have easy transportation whoa right into a pigment so this brings us to our already made nether portal and if I go back through this nether portal this is going to bring us to the modern house and this is not what we want because right now there's no way to actually get back through the nether portal um, at the farm so what I want to do uh, first today is get this fixed so let me make the uh, the long trek back over to the the farm area without a horse all right so what essentially we need to do to fix this nether portal is we need to make another portal in the nether that m that more closely matches up with the coordinates of this portal and I, what i want to do is, is i know that that uh um some people have, may never uh have done this uh in pocket edition and so i'm going to kind of show you how to to do that um and we're going to use a uh an add-on called a coordinates unlocker and so let me get that turned on right now so if I go out, unfortunately, you do have to uh, to quit your game before you can uh, uh, turn this on, which is unfortunate. That's the only thing I don't like about this. Um, but here you see this is a coordinates unlocker uh, by uh, Frax01. So we're going to add that to our resources. And then we're going to go back into our game. And while that loads... Okay, and then you're going to see right down in the right hand corner, which I have highlighted, those are the actual coordinates. So <clears throat> I think this is the only downside uh, to this, this add-on. I'd like to see more of a, like a, a, a button that you can hit or, or maybe even a, a controller command uh, to, to bring this up so we can hide it. It's either on or it's, it's off and you have to quit the game to turn it on. Um, but we're going to, to use this quite extensively uh, in this next seg segment here. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you what you need to do. First, we need to grab the coordinates of this actual portal. Um, and so you can see it's uh, 1257 and minus 534. Okay, so 1257 and minus 34. Now the middle coordinate is, um, is the uh, Y coordinate and that is the coordinate that measures you up and down right so how high you're in the world or how low you're in the world <clears throat> um, but in luckily enough in pocket edition and this it works this way in PC edition as well as long as you don't have conflicting portals the height doesn't make too much difference if we do have a problem we can match the height in the nether uh, now, if you've never done this before or you've never played around with coordinates in the nether, uh, the one, the, the most important thing you need to know about coordinates in the nether is that um, for each block in the nether, it represents eight blocks in the overworld. So if I were at uh, one, one, or zero, zero in the nether, that would represent, uh, well, maybe I'll say one, one. Uh, in the the nether that would represent uh, eight eight in the overworld so uh, so yeah so we need to do a little bit of, of math here but let's get to the nether first so we're gonna go through this portal so that we can find where we need to go and just get here to see where we are so you can see right away we're at uh, roughly uh, 106 minus 97 um, which is uh, uh, which if you were to divide by 8 your current coordinates in the overworld that gives you approximately where you are in the nether so what we need to do is uh, let's do do some the of, of the initial math here and uh, so I'm gonna put that on screen so our x coordinate uh, now becomes 157 so if we move in this direction you can see it is decreasing so we need to go in this direction and we need to go to coordinate 157 so let's do that actually let's figure out our other coordinate as well so our other coordinate is uh, is up on screen as well in the overworld and if we divide that by 8 that is going to give us minus 67, which means we need to go in that direction. So let's let's see if we can 
we might be able to reuse some of this. So let's go up here and see if, so this is minus 82 minus, you know what we should do is grab a sign real quick. Uh, I don't know if I have one in my ender chest. That's okay, we can do that later, just to mark it. Okay, so minus 67 is right here. So now we need to go to positive 157. And what we want to be very careful of is when we're digging these tunnels like this is uh, that we don't get any lava. We also want to be very conscious of, of gas as well. All right, let's fill that in. Yeah, so I know this isn't extremely exciting, but I wanted to, to show you guys, you know, that uh, that this is possible to do even in, in your world. Um, the other way to do it, of course, is the, the, the trick using uh, a cheat command to sh see where your coordinates are. So if you don't have access to install uh, the the, the add-on that I did, which was a coordinates unlocker, uh, you can use the, the native command uh, to get your current coordinates. And it looks like we only have a couple more coordinates to go here and we should be all set but this is really how easy it is and the one thing I do like about being in the nether is there we go 157 and minus 67 so we are right here so let's open this up and we're gonna make it a three wide portal um, let's get some room here um, but yeah, I mean, it makes the it makes traveling to and from your uh, your your places in your world it makes it so much easier to to deal with, um, especially if you know this little trick on how to do this. Because um, I know a lot of times people get frustrated and, and uh, you know they, they they think that their portal can't line up, um, and and hopefully hopefully I'm not made a liar here. Hopefully this does work. <laughs> Um, I'm thinking it will though. There's no reason it shouldn't. So let's open up our ender chest and see if we have some obsidian, which we do. That's great. Always handy to have obsidian with you. So we're going to go like that and then we will dig three up in the wall and then we'll dig three up in the ceiling. And we can always remake another portal too. And I plan on doing another hub for the world here. Um, it just isn't. Uh, it's just not something that I've, I've really wanted to to work on uh, as of yet. So let's get our. Actually, let's put let's put our obsidian back. Need to go. We need to go back to the end and uh, mine some more obsidian. So we've got plenty of it. All right, let's put our safe back there, and then let's grab our black one, which is our tools. Okay, and we should have a flint and steel in here, and we do, perfect. And we will light it up, and let's put that back in. And we'll put that back in our ender chest. And we will break our ender chest, and then we will go through, and hopefully with any luck, it matches up with the farm. All right. Cross our fingers, guys, and here we go. Come on. Hopefully. And look at that. There's our farm. So now if we go back, it should take us back to the portal. Oh, this is awesome. I'm so excited this is fixed because this is going to make life so much easier. Okay, so we're back in the portal we just created. We've got to dig a little more space out. And we are good. So that problem number one is already fixed for on today's episode. So again, you know, to find your coordinates, you find your coordinates in the overworld, um, divide those by eight, and those are the equivalent coordinates in the, the nether um, to give you to give you the, the the actual coordinates that you need to make it at. Um, and there's some leeway too. I could have made it one block over or or you know, I, I mean, it's not an exact science, but uh, it goes for the closest uh, nether portal. Um, so let's head back to the farm and uh, get on to our next task. All right, guys. The next thing that I want to uh, to work on with you uh, today is figuring out what we're going to do for paths. Because um, obviously the workshop was just a, the first step um, in getting this farm underway. We have a lot more things that, that we're building. Um, if you remember the uh, the the 
the slide um, that I had presented on on the actual farm project. Um, again, the surface area is going to all look like a, a normal operating farm, uh, but underground we are going to have all kinds of cool automation stuff. So. One of the first things that we need to do is set up the uh, silo bulk storage system and prep that in order to you know be ready for what we need to do underground and get that automation underway. Um, but before we can do that, we need to figure out like what a good perspective would be um, in building separation. Um, I think one of the things that I struggle with so much in Minecraft is how close to put buildings next to each other and because I mean with the world being infinite you know you want plenty of space and things may change and, and all of that um, but when you spread things out it, it, it doesn't really it doesn't make it necessarily immersive the other thing it does is, you know every block that you put things away from each other is another block that you're either gonna have to run ride a horse uh, fly with an elytra etc um, so there's got to be some sort of delicate balance and I kind of want to work that out with you guys today um, let's grab our shovel now I think the main path that I want is I definitely want it to be our uh, dirt um, or a path block because um, I think that's really important for uh, for a farm. Um, I mean, obviously, I think I don't, many farms in, in the in the Midwest do not because we're going to kind of mimic this off a, a Midwestern farm. Um, and I, you, many farms don't they don't have paved roads in between buildings um, in, in different areas of the farm uh, to get to. So I definitely want to make it dirt. And then obviously, I think we'll mix in. Um, some regular dirt as well and I'm gonna need to get that away from the grass um, super excited for the next release of, of Minecraft as well 1.2 uh, because it is it is uh, listed in the feature that they're gonna have coarse dirt um, which means we'll be able to have uh, dirt next to grass again which is which is great um, so I think one of the, the first major considerations we have is how wide are the paths going to be? Um, and there's a couple different ways we can go. I mean, if we did a three wide path, uh, it would definitely, you know, move things in closer. Um, and it would definitely feel like you're more part of, of the farm. Um, but I also feel like, you know, if we're going, I, I'm not going ultra realism here, but if we're going like, kind of more on the realism side of a farm you know you would want a, a road or path big enough for a tractor obviously we don't have tractors um, but I was even thinking you know if we did something like this um, you know there's nothing that that says that we couldn't actually have like grass in the middle um, you know, so that would kind of look like, uh, uh, you know, tire tracks and, and that sort of thing from the farm. And, you know, if we even put uh, maybe just like regular dirt out here or, you know, something like that, um, it kind of look more like a, a tire ruts uh, from a tractor. Um, but I don't know. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to on screen right now, I'm going to put a poll. Do you think that we should go with a wider path of five blocks or a, a narrower path of, of three. And I'll kind of, uh, over the next couple of days or something, I'll, I'll tally those votes and uh, see what we come up with. Um, so that's definitely, that's one decision that we need to, to make. The other is, is how close do we make this to the actual buildings? Um, so this one is, let's see, one, two, three, that's what, five blocks away? Um, that seems like an okay distance, but I'm thinking that what we really want to do is not have the path more than like two blocks away. But I don't know. You know, we want to put trees, we want to put bushes, and that sort of, uh, sort of thing. But I also don't want so much space in between because if we did a scenario like where we did this five blocks, that's a lot of space in between that we're going to have to fill either with trees or bushes and landscaping and that sort of thing, rocks, which we can do, um, but I just don't think that that's gonna really look that good. 
I wonder if I have any uh, bushes in here. Do I have any leaves in here? Let's see. I could probably plant a tree real quick. Mm, let's just let's just plant a tree real quick. And I will looks like we need to uh, to sleep, but let's get this tree planted. And Oh, the other thing, um, I don't know uh, if you guys are have updated yet, uh, Pocket Edition, um, but the addition of Bone Blocks, so cool, really, oh, why did I put that in the Ender Chest? Um, so really excited about Bone Blocks here, and let's grab our Bone Shulker Shell. And you can see I made a couple of Bone Blocks there just to, uh, just to try it out, uh, just because I was so excited. Now, actually, we probably should grab all of it because it's probably not going to grow right away for us. Perfect. And then let's grab our tools from our ender chest and grab our shears from there. And it looks like I do need to sleep. All right, let's grab a few leaves here just so that we can kind of, kind of plan this out. And then let me also grab some bone meal. Okay, just so that we can uh, grow some grass here. Oh, we got some bone meal, excellent. Okay, so what I was thinking, so if we had something, and this isn't necessarily the landscaping that would be right next to the building here, um, but you know, if we had something like this where we had some, some bushes and that sort of thing, and then we had, let's see, grass, if we had some grass next to the path, Kind of something like that. I know it's kind of hard to see with only a small variation here. Let's see. And then we definitely don't want to do just like all straight paths either, right? So maybe as we get closer to the entrance here, um, you know, we do, you know, something where it kind of curves out a little bit and then we can have you know, some paths that, that meet up here for the entrance to the to workshop. I mean, already I, I'm really liking that. Um, and I think in, I'm thinking that's not that close. Um, Cause again, I, I don't want, I don't want these buildings so separated that the farm is, is all spread out and takes us forever to get away um, or to get anywhere in the farm. Um, yeah, so that looks good. That looks good. So again, just need your, your help on deciding, um, you know, let's, that that's what it would look like with five here's what it would look like with three and then um, obviously we'd have another building that would start you know right there so that's I mean that's, that's pretty tight quarters I'm thinking I'm leaning towards the five um, but don't let me sway your vote uh, let me know if that's gonna be a three or five path now just real quick um, we're, we're we've kind of we've um, eaten up a lot of time today um, and the things that we've already accomplished, which is great. But we didn't get a lot of building done. We, we got a lot of, of decisions. We got the portal fixed. So really happy about that. Um, but for next time, the reason that I'm doing this path is because we are going to start on that silo, silo bulk storage system. Um, and it is going to be awesome. I, originally, I had only planned for 10 silos. I have planned for 15 silos, which are going to hold everything from seeds to, to wheat to beetroot seeds to, to beets, um, you name it, pumpkins, watermelons, because all these things are going to be all automated uh, down in our um, underground facilities. Then what's going to happen is, is we have to have an item elevator that's going to, to bring them up from the underground and then disperse them among the 15 silos. And that is going to, that's going to be built out this way. So hence the reason I need to know how big the path is because I need to know where to start the silos. Um, so these 15 silos are going to kind of be built out uh, in this direction. And so uh, you can see already though, what I don't want to do is I don't want to have to go down uh, three blocks. Um, and, and so we're going to make it a nice gradual, probably slope down uh, three or four blocks. Uh, but that means that I have a lot of terraforming to do. And, uh, and so we'll, we're going to get started on that and the, the silo uh, system uh, for next episode. Uh, but as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.